Hello, my name is Lisa Shea, and this video is from the Blackstone Valley Art Association October 2021 meeting, which was held on October 19th, 2021. This was held at our Uxbridge Gallery in Uxbridge, Massachusetts, and thank you to the Massachusetts Cultural Council and Uxbridge Cultural Council for supporting us. So for this workshop, we worked with Black Foam Core, and you saw the picture in the intro, and there's a small sculpture on the right hand side there on the table. What Black Foam Core is, is in essence two pieces of cardboard on either side, and in between them is foam, cellular foam. So it's thicker than cardboard or poster board or something like that. It gives it some structure, but it also means that it's hard to cut with scissors. So what we're using this to cut is exacto blades on a cutting board. So we, uh, you'll see over on the right hand side are some colored cutting boards. Just past that on the right hand side are some exacto blades. And then to glue pieces together, if you need to do some gluing, we use a hot glue gun. So the key components that you'll want to use when you're setting up using this is the foam core itself. We're using black for Halloween. The exacto blade, the cutting board to cut the object on, a pencil to do the drawing of the design, and then if you're going to be gluing pieces together to form the sculpture, then to use hot glue. But you can also use different kinds of techniques to get the pieces to connect together, like on putting notches in each one and that sort of thing. And you'll see some of that in the video. So for this first video that we're working on, I'm going to draw a spooky tree in themed for Halloween. So there's going to be a spooky tree with a trunk and a couple of branches on either side. And then I'm going to cut out some crows or ravens and I'm going to attach those to the branches with the hot glue gun. So right now what I'm doing with a pencil is I am drawing out the base design of that spooky tree. So it's got a trunk and then I think I gave it three branches on either side to put out in either direction. So you will just let me draw the design. I'm just turning the swan. Now this was a swan that Marcia did, I think two years ago when we did a previous version of the workshop and she didn't end up taking it home with her. But you're going to see later on that she's going to repurpose this, still, this same swan and add wings to it and make a new sculpture out of it. So part of what's cool about doing black foam core sculptures that you can do one version, see what you like about it, take it apart, put it back together again, do another version and so on. All right, so now that the design is drawn on the black foam core in pencil, I am taking an exacto blade and I am carefully <laughs> cutting out along those lines. So I wanna make another <laughs> number of comments about using the exacto blade here. Exacto blades are really sharp and the foam core is fairly thick. So you're having to pull hard as you're moving through it. So the exacto blade I'm using has a nice round full handle instead of a very skinny one. That makes it a lot easier for me to hold on and to really put a lot of pressure on it while I'm cutting down because I'm not only having to cut through this top layer of cardboard in the foam core, but also the bottom layer of cardboard. And that's usually the tricky part because it still has to be sharp enough to drag through that bottom piece of cardboard. And sometimes you'll see I have to go through twice or three times to get down through that bottom layer. And there are even times when I have to uh, turn it over and try to cut through the bottom layer of cardboard from the opposite side to get through it. So it's good to have an exacto blade that has a nice round uh, fuller size handle than the pencil style ones that you often see. It's good for the exacto blade to be sharp, but if you're using in a sharp exacto blade, you also have to be really careful. So don't cut towards yourself because this foam core gives you a lot of resistance. And then as you come free out of the end of the foam core, it'll move really fast. So once you are no longer being caught by the foam core, the exacto blade is going to move quite quickly and you don't want that to move quickly through you know, one of your body parts, a finger or into your stomach or something like that. So try not to drag directly towards a hand or finger or something else. You see that I've got my hand on the far side and then I'm dragging now. Now you can say I'm dragging towards me and this is tricky. I don't have the hand strength to drag sideways through the foam core. So it is going towards me, but I'm trying to be really cautious when I get towards the end of a stroke where I am about to come loose of the foam core. So uh, just be careful when you're working with exacto blades because they are of course sharp and pointy. Make sure you're using a good cutting board so you don't go through the cutting board and into the table surface below. And try to keep your 
movements generally straight. The foam core is not going to let you do a lot of really small detail work. It's um, fairly cellular in design where there's lots of pockets and nooks in the foam. Oh, see, I, I get nervous even watching this as I'm going sort of near my thumb. Don't put your <laughs> thumb <laughs> in the path of the exacto blade knife. And then cut it piece by piece is usually the easy way to get it out. Don't try to do gigantic swaths all at the same time. Do a piece of it and then draw a line towards an edge so that you can get that piece out and uh, work on it section by section because that'll help you get easier. But you can see here that I'm having some trouble getting the section out because I didn't carve all the way fully through to the bottom layer and out the bottom layer of the uh, foam core. So you just keep working your way around. It's better to take things in small pieces and to keep pulling out those small pieces than to do something where your blade catches and then it gets dragged through a section that you don't want cut because once you've cut off a piece, you know, you could try to glue it back on, but it's just not going to be as stable as if you cut it all out in the first place. So we've got a couple of branches here forming and I will just be quiet and let you watch. <laughs> you can see I'm having some problems here trying to carve my way through. So just be careful when you're doing this sort of activity. And if there are people who have uh, mobility or control issues, uh, find someone to help them so that they get assistance with some of these parts. All right, so uh, I will be quiet and let you listen to the music and then I will come back again as we get to the next step.
Okay, so now I have the base of the tree done, but it won't stand up like that because there isn't any support on the front or back part of it that would help it stand up. So one of the ways that you can make a standing structure is to use the notched approach. And you can sort of see that in the swan shape over to the right hand side. If you create a base that has a notch in the top of it, and then you alter your shape, in this case the tree, so it has a notch in the bottom of it, then you can get those two notches to interlock so that the top one and the bo bottom one fit together. And as long as you make sure that they settle down fully enough that the left, center, right, and back are all flat against the table, then it will sit well because it's got the four different directions and the four different legs, the north, south, east, west, that will be able to hold it and keep it supported. So you'll see here what I'm doing is I'm making a notch in the cross piece that this tree will sit into, and then I'll make a matching notch in the tree so that they can interlock. And you don't need any glue or anything like that to make that work. You just need to have the notches match so that the they fit snugly, but that you can get them to latch into each other. So here we go, we've got the notch in the tree and the notch in the base and they fit together snugly. And I'm just putting a little extra piece in there now to wedge it to make sure it's nice and firm. But since it's got supports in all four directions, it's going to stand very nice no matter what I put on the tree branches. So that's one way of creating a structure that stands is to use the notch technique. And you know, you could sit there and trim down the other two pieces so they look more like branches. You can do all sorts of things to the pieces that are holding up the tree or whatever your shape is. In this case, since I'm doing a series of these things, I'm just trying to do them fairly quickly to show the techniques. So I've got a tree base now, and what I'm going to work on next is putting some items into the tree. And I thought about different kinds of things like bats or ghosts or so on, but what I ended up deciding on is putting in ravens.
Now that my raven is complete, I need to attach this raven to the tree branch. And the raven is way too tiny to use the notch technique. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use a hot glue gun, which you can see in the back right hand corner. Hot glue guns are great because the glue comes out very hot and it's very thick so it will hold things in place and it works very well with uh, foam core and it cools very quickly at which point it sets so that holds it in place without you having to clamp it for a while or any of those kinds of things. So I'm going to take my little raven that I just carved with the X-Acto blade and this is the glue gun in the background that you can see and I'm going to try to get a little bit of glue out of it. I only want a small amount because this raven is pretty tiny. But I'm going to try to get just enough glue onto the base of the raven so that I can then sit it onto the tree branch. So I'm getting the glue out of the glue gun. Be careful with them again because those things are hot. And then I'm going to set the raven onto the tree branch. And it will really stick pretty much right away, especially with something this teeny. And glue guns also tend to leave little streaky bits of glue. That's the young over there who is working on her own sculpture, and I will be showing that to you later. They're working over in another tree, but she's working on a really cool large raven shape. So I've got one of my ravens stuck to the branch, and it really was that click. You just put it, put the glue on the raven, sit it on the branch and then now it's going to glue there permanently. So now I'm drawing out a second raven and then once I get the second raven drawn and cut then I will do the same thing. I'll put a little bit of glue on it. So let's uh, sit back and watch this part. Another benefit of the hot glue gun is that you can put these shapes at any angle or any direction and they will just stick there. So I could have them even hanging upside down on the branches if I wanted to. But in this case, of course, I'm just going to put them on the top of the branches. So you just put a glob of glue on the base of the ribbon, ri raven, <laughs> you 
you decide where you want it to be placed on the overall sculpture and it will just stick there. So now I have two ravens on my tree and I'm going to add in one more. So here I am adding the glue to the third and final raven for part of the tree. So you can imagine that you can do all sorts of things with this technique. You can create all sorts of sculptures with the multi parts that are huge or small or, or I wouldn't go too small because the exacto blade doesn't cut too uh, detailed of corners in the foam core. But you get a sense of how this works. We've got more videos that go over other shapes and that show what Young and uh, other people were working on. So ask if you have any questions. We are happy to help. And again, thank you to the Massachusetts and Uxbridge Cultural Councils for supporting us in our projects. So uh, thank you, and we hope to see you at some of our future seminars.